Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D, the second last stream for 2020. Uh, I hope you guys are well. Uh, I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is midday in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Hellforge, it's good to see you buddy. Uh, Hellforge has just popped the links to my website, so if you want to know more about me and what I do, you can go to phildoes3d, put a .com on the end of it, or click the link in Discord. Uh, if you do want to join the Discord server, click that link that Hellforge has just popped into Twitch chat, or click the About Me section on my Twitch page, and right down the bottom in the panels, uh, there's a little blue graphic that says Join the Phildoes 3D Discord. You can click that at any time to get an invite link as well. Uh, we're going to be working on a game called The House in the Hollow. We're working on the kitchen for that game uh, in 3D Studio Max, Ryzen for UV mapping and Substance Painter for texture painting. Uh, and then we're going to jump into the Unreal Engine. Uh, you can wishlist that game right now on Steam by clicking the link in the Twitch chat or going again to the About Me section on my Twitch page and clicking the graphic in my panels. Good morning to you as well, Hellforge. I am doing well. It's very hot today. Uh, anyone that doesn't know, I live in Melbourne, Australia, and it's really, really hot. <laughs> really hot. Oh, and there's the link to my art station. I keep forgetting about that. I do have an art station page as well. If you do want to check out some of my 3D work. Oh, got to hit that water bottle really dehydrated. Too hot. Too hot today. Uh, yes, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be working on the House in the Hollow game kitchen. We're going to UV map some stuff up. Last week we started on the oven for the kitchen. We're going to finish that today. There's only, uh, I think, the the two doors at the front and the hot plates and the buttons to actually UV map. Help <laughs> just I think that covers it all. I think you have covered it all. It sounds like a good time for coffee. Okay, we'll have a coffee as well. I do love my copy. Uh, as usual, guys, if you have any questions while I'm working, feel free to pop into chat and ask. If you just want uh, to say hello, that is always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. I get that. Many times I don't want to talk to the streamer. I just want to watch. <laughs> so, uh, Hellforge, that was a really good idea too on the uh, Discord server about including um, a help and advice section, art help and advice. So if you've got a question with 3D or with art in general, jump on the Discord and there's a new uh, channel on the Discord called Art Help Advice. Ask a question in there and that way I won't get lost as Hellforge said amongst all the uh, other stuff happening in the Discord. Hellforge says, I've got to get the sweet brain juice flowing before getting on with UV unwrapping. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I've also included another new channel on the Discord called Tools and Scripts. That's just for any interesting tools, whether you make them, like uh, Smurpery has. He's re recently written a script for Blender, for Retopology, uh, which is free. You guys should check that out. And he should pop his link to download it from the GitHub in the uh, in the uh, Tools and Scripts section. Uh, but if you just, it's also for anything. If you come across a really interesting tool or a script for whatever 3D program you're working on, whether it's Max or Maya or Blender or whatever. Pop a link in the um, tools and scripts section on the Discord server. So, Helpboard says, "Yeah, I figured it would be. Yeah, it's very useful. I, yeah, it was a great idea. Really good idea. Um, figured it would be useful. I got plenty of stuff that I'm banging my head against the, the UE wall, and I got a few work in progress picks I could use some fresh pair of eyes on. Yes, well, it always helps. I mean, when you're working on something yourself and you see it every day, all day." You can sort of, you, you end up getting blinkers, so it's always good to have fresh sets of eyes looking at your stuff. Because they'll see things that you don't see just because you've been looking at it for so long. So it's always a good idea. Now there is a gallery section too, guys, though, if you do want to join the Discord. I love looking at the work you guys make. It's one of the main reasons I stream on Twitch. It's to encourage you people to do 3D um, and look at the stuff that you guys are making. So if you've got something you want to show, pop it in the gallery and uh, I'll show it off on stream. If you don't want me to show it on stream, just when you post the image in the gallery, just put a little note at the bottom of it saying, please don't show it on the stream and I won't. 
I know not everyone is comfortable with that. And remember too, all of my streams get uploaded to my YouTube channel as well. So uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, of course, at PhilDoes3D. So that way you'll get a reminder every time I go live because I always post to Twitter when I go live. But my schedule never changes. It's every Monday and Tuesday. But today and tomorrow are the last streams for 2020 because I'm going on a Christmas break. I'll be back about the middle of January 2021. Twitter. <laughs> Thank you, Hellforge. Gee, you're a machine today. There's my Twitter link that uh, Hellforge just popped into Twitch chat. Hellforge says, I did not know that was a thing. <laughs> yes, that is a thing. Everybody's got the Twitter now. And of course, I've got a command set up in, in Discord for the Twitter. Oh, sorry, in Twitch chat for the Twitter. Okay. So I guess we'll jump in. Into Max. And yeah, I think the only thing we have to do are the doors, the grills, and the buttons and the hot plates. So let's start with the doors, I guess. Why not? Now it's a mesh and I have to convert it to a poly to use this plugin to send it to Ryzen. That's just the way the plugin works. It's always better to work in edit poly mode than edit mesh mode anyway. In your 3D program. Alford says the bot isn't much of a bucket of bolts as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that bot. That bot's got a mind of its own. We're talking about um, Nightbot. Let's uh, do this in sections so it's easy for us to UV map. And I think we'll go with... Let's try this one. That should work for what we want. Telford says, might as well. I don't know how long I can keep stalling progress today. <laughs> Telford says, uh, that and YouTube people keep getting upset that you talk too much instead of working. They do. Um, yeah, every time I upload my videos to YouTube, there's always one comment from someone that says, you talk too much. Do some work. <laughs> but you can fast forward me on YouTube. But yeah, unlike watching live here on Twitch, you've just got to put up with me. But if you're watching me on my YouTube channel, you can just fast forward. Of course, you can do that on Twitch too if you're watching back one of my VODs. Because uh, yeah, if you ever do miss the streams, all of my VODs are under the videos tab on my Twitch page as well. And Twitch's videos are much more up to date than YouTube simply because I need to keep things exclusive to Twitch for a certain period of time because I'm an affiliate. Twitch will get very annoyed and angry with me if I don't. Oh, it's actually worse than that. I signed an agreement saying I would, so I have to. I can't not do it. Uh, I might just do a little bit of stitching here. Because while the program's automated tools are pretty good, it doesn't always unwrap things in the most optimal way, so... Well, that's interesting. It's done a really strange unwrap here. Let's fix this up. Let's try to fix this up. <laughs> it's really done a really weird job. Oh, Ryzen, what are you doing? And Phil can't make a selection. There we go. It's probably because, did I do both at the same time? I bet I did. Yeah, it, it has a real problem sometimes if you try and do too much geometry at once. I'm going to keep those separate, but we'll stitch these up. We'll try to. Oh, 
What are you doing? Hellport says, uh, this is so weird to be honest. The whole point of streaming is the interaction. And like you said, fast forward on YouTube is a thing. <laughs> I know. YouTube, I mean, you can, I can, you can live stream on YouTube as well. I don't, I stream on Twitch, but live streaming is also a thing on YouTube, apparently. Although I don't know how many people really go to uh, YouTube to watch live streams. Okay, it's, it's really, it's giving me a lot of issues here see what is going on <laughs> the program is losing its mind hmm I think what we might do is we might do this in bits see if it handles it better if we can see you're gonna be like that are you? you're gonna be difficult I'm gonna come back to this. I might actually do them do it in Mac. Well, let's see if we can't clean it up. It shouldn't be too bad. We'll do a repack in Max. We'll look at it there. Elford says, uh, didn't you also sign an agreement not to leave the room while you stream? Since the studio keeps yelling at you. <laughs> no, I did not sign that agreement. I did not sign any agreement that I would leave the room. Or that I wouldn't leave the room, I should say. Helpwood says, uh, how are you doing today? Other than it being too hot outside. Uh, apart from it being too hot, then I'm doing pretty good. Yep, pretty good. Two days until I'm on break and I'm <laughs> looking forward to having a bit of a rest. <laughs> Phil's tired. Phil's very tired. This is a glass door that will be in the oven, in case you're wondering what that is. I don't think I've forgotten everything. I think everything is UV mapped. Let's send that back to Max. How are you though, by the way? Are you okay? You're getting some sleep, I hope? Because it's really early in the morning uh, for Hellforge. She's in Europe. So I know it's really, really early for you. I don't think uh, Android Lust will be with us today. He said that he might not be in tonight's stream because he had to go out of town in the Discord server. Uh, Helpwatch says 2.15 a.m. So it's not too bad. Okay, well, that's good. Still pretty late, but uh, I can't talk. I stay up working till 2.30 in the morning usually. So, uh, let's send this door over. Now, hmm, I'm just thinking I probably don't need to UV map the store because I'll probably just end up copying using the one door inside of uh, Unreal because they both should be identical in size. Let's just jump back into Max. I am just going to check to make sure the size is, is the same by copying this one and in max all i do to copy is to hold down the shift key and drag okay 
I might have to because you'll notice that the handle is on the opposite side on this one. Um, I could probably do a flip inside of Unreal. Yeah, I might might do that. So if, the size is identical, and inside of Unreal, I can flip it on the um, on one of the axes so that the handle will come over here. Let's make, well, I have to think to make sure that that's not going to affect the physics because these doors you will actually be able to open in the game. It shouldn't. It shouldn't affect the physics. I'm not flipping it around the other way. But it should be okay. So we probably don't need to UV map that one. This one is on its own. should be fine. But we do need to pack it. So I'm going to throw down an unwrap UVW. And we're going to get Max to do a pack. I just want to fix this one because it's rotated and I don't want it at an angle. I'm just going to move it over here. Let's throw down a checker pattern to check our textile density. And don't worry about the density being different between the oven and the door. Uh, actually, I think what we might do with that is we might pack it all into one texture map. So for the moment, we'll leave it like this. We'll continue UV mapping the rest of the pieces. Then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to uh, attach everything together. We'll texture paint it in Substance Painter and then I'll separate the pieces again and that means we can use one texture map for the entire oven instead of like one for the doors, one for the knobs, one for the oven, you know, blah 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 blah. <laughs> Hellford says, uh, I'm doing alright overall, been a bit unmotivated to do anything lately since it feels like I'm not making any progress on anything. Oh, well, it's okay to take a break. Nothing wrong with taking a break. I mean, Everyone feels that way, that does 3D. And you know, I, pro I will still probably be doing 3D stuff while I'm on holiday anyway. I won't be streaming though. I'm not guaranteeing I'll be doing 3D stuff, but uh, I probably will because I just can't stop. <laughs> This whole taking a break is all well and good if it wasn't for the fact that I've been taking a break for the past three weeks now, Help says. <laughs> it's okay. It's good to recharge. Sometimes if you try and push yourself, it just doesn't work in the end anyway. So it's always good to have a break. You don't want to force yourself to work. Okay, but we do need to do the... Uh, the grills, but again, I think what I'll end up doing is I'll do one of them and then we can just duplicate it inside of the Unreal Engine. I think that's probably the best way to go. So we'll do one of the grills and we'll do grill number one, why not? So again, yeah, th this is just to improve performance in the game engine. So the more textures you have assigned to an object, a game object, the more draw calls you have in the game engine and the more draw calls you have, the slow that starts to slow the engine down so keeping everything to one texture will mean fewer draw calls which will mean a faster render in the engine which is a good thing now, again this is a mesh so I have to convert it to a poly and send it to Ryzen in three weeks is nothing Having not having done anything for three weeks that's okay Let's see if we can do this all in one piece. We should be able to. That's not going to work. This is going to work, but I don't, really don't like the way it breaks the UV. The uh, It creates all these cut lines. We may not have a choice, though, I think. 
I mean, UV maps are okay. It has created a lot of cut lines, but this grill is really only squares anyway. Um, a normal grill, you know, would be round, but we use fewer polys this way, and because it's such a small object inside of the oven, we can get away with doing it like this, I think. The player won't notice. And we could do a high-res version and uh, do a bake down, but again, I don't think it's going to be necessary because it's never going to be really noticed in the game engine and we've put smoothing groups on it anyway so it's less likely to be noticed that they're squares. Hellport says I may be so but it still frustrates me since I really need to get my portfolio sorted out. Fair enough. Oops, uh, now let's do the knobs. Actually, before we, yeah, we'll do the knobs and we'll do a repack and we'll go from Again, edit folly. But I said to you before, you know, if you get stuck doing something, I mean, motivation is different from being stuck on a problem, a 3D problem or a programming problem. But if you get stuck, it's better to go away for a little while, have a rest and come back to it instead of trying to force yourself to figure it out and to work out what the problem is. Yeah, I'm going to... I, I, that, I didn't update to max to the 0.3 version update. I normally remove these because um, I, I don't send stuff to the cloud. <laughs> so I normally remove the, uh, the icons here that list that. Anyway, I'll do that later. Send that over. And we're going to try and do this in sections. So we'll do these four. With a bit of luck, the program shouldn't have too much of a problem. They're pretty simple shapes. And then we'll do these four. You guys done all your Christmas shopping? Christmas in about a week. Can you believe it? Where's the Egon? I know you take your life into your own hands when you go out Christmas shopping in, in this new human malware world we're living in. Uh, Hellford says, I'm sure there are uh, some of those oven tray thingies that are squares instead of uh, cylindrical. And you're probably right. I've never seen one. So you're probably right. But we, we throw a smoothing group on the uh, on the square and it looks cylindrical anyway in the game engine. So it's all good. And being a square means we, we save a lot on polygons. So. And because it's such a small thing and it's in the oven, the player will never notice in any way. Even if we didn't have smoothing groups, they wouldn't notice. Hellport says, saving on Geo is one upside. Besides, it's hip to be square anyway. <laughs> oh, Hellport. It is hip to be square, that's right. We've all heard the song. <laughs> These ones might be a bit more of a challenge. We'll see how, how the program handles it. Don't know how it's going to go. Let's see if we can get a better unwrap using one of the other tools. We probably won't, but we'll try anyway. Yeah, no, again, that's, that's going to create way too many cut lines. 
It'll unwrap okay, but it, yeah, it creates way too many cups. This one is probably better. We're just getting the one cut line. We are getting a little bit of stretching, which is that reddish color, but not enough to worry about. I'd rather have fewer cuts and a bit of stretching than more cuts and no stretching. It really does depend on the object though. I don't remember what buttons what in all these different programs. I get confused. Phil gets confused, and we all know it's easy to confuse Phil. So what have we got left now? We've got these little little half circles on the end. Let's see if we can get a better unwrap. Nope. That's a much cleaner unwrap, so that's good. Again, this program I'm using is called Rhizom UV. You can actually buy it outright or you can rent it on subscription like Adobe software. Uh, it is really good. You don't need it. I, I use it because it's really quick and fast. But all 3D programs now have really good unwrapping tools built right in. So don't think you need to get an external tool because you don't. Bill's just using something that does the job really quickly, that's all. That one's not going to work. This one probably will work. Not a great unwrap though. Again, we're getting some stretching. Let's just see if we can't get a better unwrap using one of the other tools. Because you never know. Again, we're going to get a good unwrap, but we're going to have a lot of cut lines. All we might do is we might just uh, tidy this one up a little bit by hand. So we'll pick that one and we'll stitch it together. And we'll pick this one and we'll stitch it together. And I only want one cut line, so we'll stitch all the others that aren't required. Let me just undo that. I might stitch one of the others instead, I think. And Cyberpunk's been released. Finally! And uh, don't play it on a console, is, is my suggestion. <laughs> or don't play it on a PS4 or one of the old Xboxes. Because apparently it's a bit buggy. I'm sure CD Projekt Web will fix it, but it might take them a little while. I'm just going to undo that and we'll come back to that at the end. Um, Hopwood says, I get confused too, especially if I'm jumping between software and one sitting. Blender, Painter, Unreal, all use different hotkeys. Yeah, 
in different directions as well. Yep, Z uh, axes up and Blender, but Unreal seems to have uh, funny ideas as to what it should be. I know it does, it can get really confusing. The help board says when you're working in a production environment, you have to work a bit faster than you're just doing a personal project. So having, having Ryzen to speed things up isn't a bad thing. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly right. Um, when you work on your own stuff, like uh, Hal Forge said, you can take your time and get it exactly the way you want it. But if you're working for a studio, they generally want you to do it as quickly as possible. Because the more work you can do, the more money the studio can make. And they're all about making the money. Which is fair enough, they're a business. Let's do the ones over here now. Uh, Hellforge says, considering how it's been running, I wish they kept tinkering with it for a few, <laughs> for a few months more. <laughs> Cyberpunk, that is. Yeah. Uh, look, I haven't played it yet. I've installed it. Uh, I've just, like, started it up to make sure everything would run and it was, <laughs> it was all going to be working properly. Um, but I'm still... Uh, I, I picked a Corpo um, life path, so I'm still stuck in the main building at the very beginning. So I haven't experienced any bugs, but I haven't played enough of it to actually really say that I've experienced a good part of the game to find out whether there are a lot of bugs. But I have read online on places like Reddit and stuff that um, people on older consoles are having a lot of issues. But to City Project Red's credit, they have uh, offered refunds for everyone on a console, like a PS4 or the old Xbox S that are having issues, uh, they will refund your money if you bought it from um, GOG, directly from them, which is good. But uh, you guys know, I, I really like uh, The Witcher 3. It's one of my, probably one of my favorite games. And even that, when it was first released, was a bit buggy. You just got to expect it, particularly with these open world games. I mean, it's huge. Uh, and I, see, I said to you guys last week before it released, uh, they're probably one of the most difficult games to make an open world game because they're so massive and there's so many different things interacting with so many other different things uh, that it's really difficult to catch every bug. There's always going to be bugs that the QA people didn't find. It's just the nature of open world. So you've got to cut them a little bit of slack. They didn't do it on purpose. They didn't release a bug, I'm sure. Well, I'm, I don't know how how much pressure they got from the publisher to actually release it after all the delays um, so but I'm, I'm, they didn't intend for it to be buggy and they will fix it they did with The Witcher and I'm sure they will with the Cyberpunk that's what I'm trying to say uh, but my advice is if you do want to play it PC Master Race all the way. You should be playing on a PC, not a console peasant. Be a PC pe be a PC Master Race. Play your games on PC. Because you get much more control over, um, you know, what you can enable, what you can disable to improve your performance. With a, with a console, you don't get that. They The developer locks you into a certain frame rate and a certain resolution, and there's nothing you can do about it. Usually. Which is why the PC is the way to go if you want to play a game. Hellboard says, I've only played it for about, you've only played it for about three hours. I think I played it for about 15 minutes. Uh, I've only played it for about three hours so far. The only thing I've seen so far uh, have just been some floating meshes in cutscenes. Yeah, no, that's all. I, I mean, I, I, I don't think people are reporting major game-breaking bugs in the PC version. PC version here. 
uh, apart from things like floating newspapers, floating garbage bags, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I have read a couple of people say that some of the uh, – they ran into like one of the um, – objectives in one of the games in, in one of the objectives was broken like but that's rare i haven't come across too many people complaining about that on pc consoles on the other hand particularly the older consoles yeah you're not going to have a good time don't do it uh, the fact is the, the older consoles are just not powerful i'm, I'm, I'm sure city project red will fix it if you do want if you do have an xbox s or you've got a ps4 Eventually, they will make it into a playable state. But you've got to remember, those consoles are really old now. And this is a, a brand new game. Uh, which, even for a PC, is pretty full on. As far as performance goes, you really need a decent machine to play it. So don't expect miracles if you're running one of the older consoles. Uh, you might be better just not playing it. Finding something else to play until you can upgrade to a proper PC. Which will be my recommendation. A graphics card in a PC. But you can do so much more if you've got a computer. You know, you can use it for productivity. You can, you can do 3D on it. You can do any sort of art on it. You can do many, many things with a computer, as well as play really cool games. So it's always better value a computer. Yeah. And you can upgrade things as they get obsolete, like your graphics card and stuff. You can't do that with a console. You're stuck with that performance of that console for generally seven to eight years because console generations now are around about seven or eight years before they refresh them with something new. So that's why my advice has always been to game on the PC because you can do so much more. Uh, Helpwood says, uh, like a pair of floating chopsticks and some ramen that were hovering suspiciously. Helpwood says, cool games, you say? Steam. Well, that's right, Steam. There's Steam. Let's not forget Steam. Wish, you can wishlist this game you see me working on the assets for right now by clicking that link Helpwood popped into Twitch chat. So, yes. And, and that and the fact, too, the games that you buy on a computer are much cheaper than games you can buy on a console. The same game on a console costs more than than buying it on a computer, on a PC. So not only do you get the advantage of having a PC that you can do other stuff with as well as game, not only did he have the advantage that you can upgrade things like your graphics card when they start to get a bit obsolete on a PC, uh, you also get cheaper games to buy than what you would pay on a console. So, And look, ignore... <laughs> You go to, if you go to like NVIDIA's forum or you go to AMD's forum, you see people complaining about drivers and saying, it, you know, my computer caught on fire after I installed your driver. Those people are very few and far between. Now, I'm not saying they're not having problems, but generally those people are complaining about something that's not the fault of the driver. It's some fault on their computer. They either haven't installed something properly or or they're using a bit of hardware that's outdated or, or the drivers are old. They, they've generally got other problems with their computer. The majority, 99% of people, never have a problem with drivers. I've never had a problem with an NVIDIA driver. Never. And I've been using NVIDIA graphics cards for, you know, over a decade. So, <laughs> so don't, don't get scared off when you go to the forums of, of NVIDIA or AMD, if you buy an AMD graphics card, and you see things like, your, your driver destroyed my computer, my computer caught on fire after I, I installed your driver, or, you know. Those people generally have other problems with their PC. They've either installed too much stuff, they've installed the wrong stuff, they might have malware running on their computer, you never know. Um, let's send this back, I think I've, I think that's all UV map, so we'll send it back to Max and uh, we'll do a pack, because the UVs are a bit of a mess here. So let's do that. Helpwood says, I installed AMD graphics drivers. <laughs> And I broke my foot. AMD is terrible. That's right. Well, you know, it's all AMD's fault because the drivers broke your foot. Or it's all NVIDIA's fault because your computer caught fire after you installed their driver. Or your graphics card died after you installed it. Look, NVIDIA don't do that. It's just, I don't know where these people get these wild conspiracy theories from. It's like the old chestnut that, and I've seen this so many times in forums, 
driver forums. Oh, your new driver is gimping, gimping performance of my graphics card or my piece of hardware. But as if NVIDIA are doing it on purpose or AMD or something. It's just not the case. It's just not, they're not going to do that. And, you know, you, they say that you do it to, to sell new graphics cards. No, they don't. They don't do that. That's just a myth. And it's just a bad myth. It's just not true. So they don't gimp their drivers to make their new hardware work better than the old stuff. And it's just a fact that newer hardware will work better because it's newer. That's the nature of the beast when it comes to uh, technology. The newer stuff will always run faster. So yeah, I, I really feel sometimes for, uh, look, I don't feel too bad because NVIDIA make huge amounts of money, but uh, yeah, the, the, they're accused of things that just aren't true. Having said that though, I was not impressed with the letter that was sent to, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but I'm not going to harp on it, but apparently NVIDIA sent a letter to one of the uh, hardware reviewers in Australia called Hardware Unboxed, I think they are. I don't generally watch them, but they're an Australian mob of hardware reviewers on YouTube uh, and apparently NVIDIA wasn't happy that they weren't talking about ray tracing more. So NVIDIA sent them a letter saying, oh well because you don't think ray tracing is so good we're not going to send you any free Founders Edition graphics cards to review in the future. Um, but they backpedaled on that pretty quickly, NVIDIA. So. And, look, I, and I don't know the story because I don't really watch Hardware Unboxed. I don't actually like them that much. I, I find the, the guys a bit annoying. Um, no offence to the guys at Hardware Unboxed or to anyone that does like them. Uh, I, I watch uh, other hardware reviewers on YouTube more than I watch them. Maybe it's their Australian accent. I just can't come at that Australian accent. <laughs> Being Australian. Uh, Hellford says, probably at the bottom of, the, of a barrel, drinking deep from the silly bottle. That's right. Remember to save as well in Max. Yes, I must. Hellford says, I, I, however, will feel bad for NVIDIA if they sponsor me. <laughs> they don't sponsor me either. So. I mean, I use NVIDIA because I like NVIDIA. I think they have the best hardware. That's why I buy their graphics cards. Um, it, it meshes really well with a lot of the software I use as well, like Adobe and, and Max and stuff. But. But I am not sponsored by NVIDIA. I get no kickback from them at all. Just the same as on uh, Epic Games. I get nothing from them either. Come on, Epic, give me something. <laughs> uh, but I do like their engine. Their engine is probably one of the best I've used. So. Okay, let's, that's those done. Let's move on to the hot plates now. But by all means, there's uh, game engines like Unity, which is also supposed to be very good. I've not used Unity personally, but uh, I've heard good things about it from people that do. Plenty of game engines you can use nowadays. Now this one's going to be a challenge because it's quite... Uh, we might break this up to give the program a little bit of a helping hand, I think. Because otherwise I know it's going to have a problem. It does look like it's having a real problem. That's interesting. This has no bottom on it, so... program seems to have a problem here trying to do an automatic unwrap. I'm wondering it um, might be better for me to try and do these in Max. Hellford says we're living in the best time in history for making games. The engines are really powerful and the free tools to make the assets are solid across the board. You are not wrong. That is exactly right. Um, we have a, a huge range of free game engines we can use. Uh, free 3D software now, which is really good. Texturing software like Substance or Mari, which is also really good. No excuse. No excuse to give it a go. Um, 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 um. Let's just leave this bit for the moment. Let me see if I can work on this top piece here. 
fact, let's see if it all, if it has a better job at trying to do it all as one piece. You never know with this program. It's, it's managed to do the top piece, but the bottom piece is giving it an issue, which is really strange because you can see the bottom piece is really nothing. So I'm going to send this back to Max and we're going to take a look at this. So I'm just going to isolate this piece of geometry. I'll close that down. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to throw an unwrap down on this. Actually, I'm not going to do an unwrap. I'm going to. I'm going to throw down a UV map, a cylindrical with a cap. We're going to make sure that we're in the right orientation. So we're basically ignoring the UVs we just did in Ryzen, which was really only the top. But I just want to throw um, a checker pattern on this to see what it's done. Now you see the texel density is wrong, which is through the side here. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing here is, but, but it UV mapped the bottom here properly. so. But for these pieces, I'm going to remove that unwrap. Uh, you can see what's happening here with the UV mapping. That Ryzen, this is what Ryzen did. So we're going to collapse the stack and detach the base. Uh, now we're going to do a UVW map cylindrical with a cap. So that that's mapped correctly. Collapse the stack. And now we can reattach the base. Uh, we'll do a repack after we've done the others. So this what this is going to tell me is that I'm, I'm probably I'm going to break all of these up into two different pieces so that we can send the top to rise and we can do the bottom in max because it's going to have the same problem I guarantee it with all of them you know if it does it in one it'll do it in all Helpwood says, not to mention the ocean of information available on forums and YouTube. That's that's exactly right as well. Spot on. Uh, it's much, much easier to get stuff done today than it ever was. To get into doing 3D or making games or whatever it is you guys want to do with your 3D work. Or your artwork. It is much, 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 much easier to do it nowadays than it was, say, 10 years ago. Okay, uh, so I'm going to send, start by sending ones through to Ryzen first. So again, edit poly. Send the top part over. Wait for Ryzen to open up. Have a coffee in the meantime. Don't think too guys, if you post something on Discord, I won't see it because I have Discord open at the same time as Twitch chat. I wonder where Smurf is today. Where are you, Smurfberry? Send that back. 
And again, we're just going to select the bottom one and throw an UVW map of cylindrical with a cap in the X and fit it. Okay, let's send this one over to Ryzen. I'll do a save once we've done the hot plates, but I must remember to do that. Uh, Helpwood says, yeah, same with music production, the hardware, software and information are all affordable and easy to access. Yeah, I, I, I really hope, I love music. Music is one of the most important things humanity has ever created. I've never gotten into creating my own though, which is really remiss of me, but I know, but yeah, I've never actually done music production. I'd like to, I mean, because I like it. I, like I think music's really cool uh, and I should learn. Just getting the time. And again, we're going to do a cylindrical with a cap in the X and do a fit. Again, see it's complaining because I forgot to turn it into a poly edit poly instead of an edit mesh. That's only this plugin. You can, uh, this is the free version of the plugin. You can you can buy another version that's obviously <laughs> the, the guy that created the free version created a paid version, and in the paid version you can use Edit Mesh if you want. My advice would still be to convert it to an Edit Poly because Edit Poly is just better. And then the last one. Uh, Helpwood says, I started playing guitar back in 2003 and started seriously uh, record and produce stuff a couple of years after that. Well, that's really cool. Um, I used to play the clarinet. I haven't done it for years, but I did learn to play the clarinet. So being, I'd love to be able to play the guitar though. I'd love to hear some of your stuff, Elfwood. Elfwood says, I haven't done much of it in the past few years because I focused on 3D instead. <laughs> this is the problem, I mean, yeah, you get so caught up in doing one thing that you don't get time to do anything else. All these things take so much time. Okay, so now we have, let's just check and see if there's anything we've forgotten. We've done the oven, we've done the knobs, we've done one of the uh, grills, we only need to do one. We've done one of the oven doors, we only need to do one. Um, we've done the hot plates, so now we should be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save. And so that's that's the separated version. Now we want to attach these together. So I'm going to attach, I'm going to collapse my stack. And I'm going to attach the hot plates. The reason I kept them separate was because I said to you guys, I was, I was contemplating letting a player actually turn the hot plates on and all. There's really no reason for that though in the game. It's, it's not part of a puzzle or anything. Uh, I will have it so the player can open and close the doors of the oven though. So I I'm going to attach these together. Um, I'm going to attach the knobs as well, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to attach the doors and... Will I? No, I'm not going to attach the doors, they need to get separate. Um, and I'm not going to attach the grill because we can just duplicate the grills then. If I attach them now, I'd have to UV map the other two, three. So we won't do that. And that way I can duplicate them in the game engine. Um, so I'm just going to save this as a new version. We'll make this um, version... Six. 
now I'm going to attach the one of the grills and the door but I'm going to do it on a copy so I'm going to select everything hold down the shift key and duplicate it and on the duplicate I'm going to attach everything together so we want the door and we want it was the bottom grill okay uh, we also yeah, that, that's fine so now what I can do is I can just remove the pieces here that we're going to copy we're going to be copying in the game like that door these grills I'm having a problem selecting this one How do I want to do this? That one. Okay. So now everything is UV mapped. Everything is attached as one object. Now we need to do a repack on this. And unwrap. A help which says, if you want, I can toss you one of my less angry songs that doesn't have any vocals. Yeah, do. Certainly do. I'd love to hear it. Uh, give me a link in uh, Discord if you want. Or you can send a link to my email. Called... Sniper Echo, it's good to see you, buddy. Yeah, since I'm not a fan fan of growling now, I don't like yelling <laughs> in music. Sniper, it's good to see you, buddy. Uh, it goes really good with me. It's very hot, though, Sniper Echo. <laughs> We're all complaining about the weather. What else is new? But, yeah, it's really hot in, in Melbourne here today. We have got a cool change due to come through uh, this afternoon at some stage, but at the moment it, it's not here and I'm hot. I'm all hot and bothered. I hope you're well. Second last stream of the year. Last stream tomorrow for 2020. Uh, we're going to get Max now to pack these UVs. Give it a little while. There we go. So now our texel density should be correct. I'm just going to turn off map seams for our oven. Well, for the copy of our oven here. Uh, you can't see the door there. That's a separate. Is that separate? That's a good question. No, it's part of the same one. Um, we don't want that. So I'm going to collapse the stacks. Um, the glass door has to be a separate material. It can't be part of the same material. Uh, we'll, we'll create a glass. We have a glass. I have a glass shader in Unreal that we'll use for that. We'll reuse the one we've already used in Unreal. So what I need to do is I need to detach the glass from the glass door. Uh, we'll just get Max to do a repack on the UVs, just to make sure we're using our UV space correctly. Now that we've removed the door. Okay. And we're doing this on the copy so that we can use one texture map for the for the separate pieces. Because that's just going to be a better way to go. And I'm just wondering why that is not... Check it up, that grill in there. Let's see. It should be. Why isn't it? Because we did UV map it. You're good? Good to hear, Sniper. Yeah, that time of the year. I know. Can you believe, like, in a week it's going to be Christmas? A week? Next week, isn't it? Christmas. Christmas! What's going on? Where's the year gone? 
It's insane. Insane. Um, I'm just going to make sure. I, I, I want to find out why that grill isn't. Um, check it out. <laughs> why you do this? I'm just going to isolate this piece. Bill's getting confused here. What's going on there? What is going on there? Is that just a shadow? Maybe just a shadow. I'm just going to turn on plate color. No, there is actually... Well, what is that? Is that part of the door? Let's collapse the stack. And find out exactly what is going on here. And detach that. And again, we'll go into isolation mode. There we go. But the grill is not textured up. Why is that? Why are the grill not textured? It should be. Well, not UV map. Okay, I'm going to work out what's going on here. Uh, it looks. We're just going to uh, separate this out so I can look at what's going on. It should be um, UV mapped and it doesn't look like it is for some reason. So let's detach that. And that way I can throw an unwrap down and I can check what's going on. Yeah, it's, it's not UV mapped. You see, there are no UVs now, zero to one space. Why it's not UV mapped is beyond me because we did UV map it here. I'm just going to see if I can't copy the UVs from one to the other. We may be able to, we may not. Okay, it's grill one. I'm going to copy that Rhizome modifier. Uh, find the object we just separated and paste that down. It doesn't look like it's going to uh, take though. No, I don't, know, I don't understand why. It's very odd. Okay, we'll do something else then. We will delete that one. Uh, I want to get this piece out of the way that's blocking my view. So I'm going to isolate both of these. Select this one and attach that one. And again, we're just going to make sure the right texture map is assigned to that. This is the glass in the door. Uh, again, I'm going to throw an unwrap down and check that our UV mapping is correct here. We'll get next to packet. And I'm just going to check the textile density by assigning this material to it. And it's correct, so we can send it back to the original material that it should be, which is this button here. Now we can select the grill and drag a copy by holding the shift key down. Now you see what's going on? What, uh, <laughs> that's what's happening. This is a bug in Max and it's one that we've run into before and I've talked about. Hellpoint says I went on vacation and never came back. <laughs> Uh, this is a bug in Max. If you go to the uh, to the channel info, like if we um, basically what it's doing is it's not copying the UV channel over. So if I go to the original, I should be able to copy that 
to this one. Now you see that we've got our UVs back. It's a bug in Max. It's been a bug in Max for, since version 2016, and Max is up to version 2021 now. Uh, I don't know why Autodesk don't fix it. Fix it, Autodesk. Fix it. It's not hard to, to fix, but it shouldn't be happening to begin with. It's basically what happens when you try and do a copy on some objects in Max. Uh, it's been this, like I said, since Max 2016. So I really, really, really wish that they would fix it. Snipe says, weird how they haven't sorted I know. Tell me about it. I mean, maybe because, look, I, I haven't actually lodged a bug about it. I should. But maybe because it doesn't crash Max, it doesn't get a bug report sent to Autodesk. So they don't, I'm sure they know about it. I mean, I've bitched about it for years. <laughs> So I'm sure they know. I'm sure other people will complain. Now, like you saw me, it's it's easy to it's easy and quick to fix, but it shouldn't happen to begin with. So, but that's Autodesk. You know what they're like. Healthwood says at least they're consistent with their bugs. That's, this is true. Healthwood says there are always uh, they. There are always new and unknown ones in Blender, but Max keeps the whole ones. <laughs> well, that's just it. Uh, Autodesk update Max all the time out of all these cool new things like retopology and all that sort of stuff. But they don't fix the old bugs. Just fix the old bugs, please. Please! Um, so what we're going to do here now is now we're going to attach the grill back to the rest of it. So I'm going to collapse the stack. And we're going to attach the oven to the rest of the door. We're going to keep the glass here separate. Now we're going to do an un uh, a UVW unwrap so we can repack the UVs again now that everything is there. Wait for Max to do that, have a copy while it does it. Now we will check our texel density. And again, our density should be correct. And it is. And the reason we're doing this on a copy here is so we, again, so we can use the one texture map. We've got to keep the door separate so we can manipulate it in the game in real time. But we want to just use one texture map instead of having one for the door, one for the knob, one for the hot plates, you know, instead of having four or five, we can have one. So we attach it all together so we can do that. Now we're going to reuse the same door here on this side. I can jump back into default now. So now we have everything attached. I'm just going to rename this um, oven attached just so I don't get confused in like two months time if I want to reopen the file and I don't, I don't understand what this version is doing here in this one. So that should be good. So basically what we're going to do is when we export this to texture up in Substance Painter, we're going to export and work on this one. But when we actually export to bring it into Unreal, we're going to be working with this one. Uh, but we're just going to copy the UVs across. So basically, actually what I think I'll do, no, yeah, that's what we're going to do. It's an identical copy. So we should be able to select this one. I go back into our channel info here. And I should be able to just copy the UVs from here onto here. And then we can export this for Unreal. So this one's Substance, this one's Unreal. Let's do a quick save. Sniper says true that about the bugs in uh, Blender. Sniper says the last two minor release blenders have added over 40 new features and fixed over 200 bugs. Hellford says, how many of those new things are actually useful? Sniper <laughs> says, uh, I use six of them today alone. But you know me for using the latest build. Yes, we know. But it's always good to use the latest build. I'm using the latest build of uh, 3D Studio Max as well. So that's always a good thing. Using the latest build is good. Uh, so we've UV mapped the fridge. I'm just thinking, did we kept the fridge door separate? We, we may just jump back into Max, uh, back 
back to the fridge so that we can do a copy like we've done here. So we so we can use one texture map. So I'm going to go back to the fridge. Bridge. So we have UV mapped it up, which is good. But we kept it separate, so I have a feeling that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it again. Let's see if Max messed up the UV. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You can never tell. Uh, we're going to throw an unwrap UVW down. So I can check. It looks like it's kept the UVs. Yep. Right, so that's all good. Let's collapse the stack. Uh, but we want to attach these two pieces together so we can work with just one UV map. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to open up the fridge. Got angle snap on, good. So I just want to double check when we do an attach that everything is UV mapped correctly. Uh, so this is the one we'll work on with Unreal so that the door is separate. This is the one we'll send over to Ryzen. Uh, sorry, to Substance Painter. So we're going to collapse the stack again. And I'm going to attach the door even though the door is open, it doesn't matter. We're only using this for the UVs, nothing else. So even though we're going to texture map this version in Substance and use this version in Unreal, uh, we're just going to copy the UVs across. So now we can check the te texel density here to make sure it is all correct. And it does indeed look right. So I'm just going to rename this one Bridge Attached. This is the one for Substance, this is the one for Unreal. Let's just do a quick save again. I just want to save out a new version of this one. Again, let's just turn off checker pattern because we don't need to see that now. Uh, we call this one attached, that's good. And I'm just going to save this file as a new version, calling it final. And we're going to open up the actual kitchen now because we have to UV map that. So. Uh, I, just might, I think I want to make a couple of adjustments to the kitchen cabinets. So this is the kitchen. Well, this, these are the cabinets for the kitchen that I've uh, put together. So basically, the room is pretty much a square. On the left-hand side wall, we have a window, which will be this side over here. So basically, I think what we'll do, we'll work it out when we bring this into the uh, game engine to actually set the kitchen up. But I think what my idea here is to have like the fridge here. So basically the, the door is going to be like here to enter the kitchen. The kitchen is pretty much a square. So here we'll have the fridge. Over here we'll have the oven we were just working on. Which means here, about the middle of the wall, we're going to have a window. Uh, so this the way I've designed this here is not quite correct. I'm going to have to make some adjustments. We can't have an overhang like this, over, overhanging the window, because trying to position it correctly is going to be a real nightmare. Uh, so we're better off removing this end piece and just finishing the kitchen cabinet top around about here. So the window can sit like in there behind the sink. Uh, Design-wise, it's pretty much like the rest of the furniture we've created for the building. So Art Nouveau, lots of smooth corners and simple. So it basically matches the rest of the furniture we have in the building. Uh, we'll work out what 
how we want to texture it up, but I'm probably thinking I'll go with some sort of wood for these cabinets and probably a marble for the, for the countertop. Helford says, uh, yeah, yeah, but don't use the latest fill. The old is one is working as intended in before getting slapped. <laughs> in before getting slapped for calling fill old. <laughs> oh, you will get a slap. Jade, you want me to make a jade? <laughs> a jade kitchen, wouldn't that be something? Mm. Don't know about jade. So, uh, we are going to have... Um, glass in these doors so again the top doors here are glass uh, I did initially intend to make these glass as well and I, I still may but I may just make them solid wood we'll work that out when we jump into Unreal uh, but this side see we have open cabinets here and I don't really know that I want to have an open cabinet so I think what I'll end up doing here is duplicating one of the glass um, panels from over here. So again, shift key. We have a UV map to jet, so we don't have to worry about UVs being messed up because of uh, Max's bug when it actually comes to copying something. We'll move that over here. Pull it back. I'm just going to isolate these two so it's easy for me to maneuver them together. And we're just going to scale it up because this cabinet's a bit taller. Let's again make another copy of that. Select these and isolate them. Move it into place. And scale it. thing I think I want to do is grab the handle and duplicate that. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. making sure my positioning is correct. So the handles are on the uh, left hand side of the cupboard. So we need to move this one. Oh, actually, this one's on the opposite side, so... I don't want the cupboard to open that way. I do want the cupboard to open this way because there'll be a wall here. So we will keep the handle on this side. Okay. 
Um, and this one, yeah, we'll do the same thing again. So I'm going to duplicate the handle. Let's move it back. Actually, I'm going to be removing these completely, aren't I? So <laughs> that was this one was a bit of a waste. We're going to remove this completely. Uh, we're going to be removing this. We are going to... I like this curved edge here because the kitchen cabinets are all very curvy. Uh, Helpwood says, worst case you could try Jade for the countertops and take a screenshot of it to post it on the disc if I could. Yes, look, when we jump into Substance Painter we can play around with it and see what we like. Helpwood says, and go with Marvel or whatever else you're thinking about for the tops. Yeah, look, I haven't I haven't settled on Marvel. I don't know. It might be something else. Not, not, not completely sold on Marvel. I could choose something else. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to jump into the top viewport. We can play around with it and see what looks cool. Uh, we're going to edit poly. I'm going to select the top. Uh, throw down a slice plane. I'm going to slice it probably there like that. Now I can why did it not slice all the way through? Because oh, I'm, I'm in object mode, not in sub-object mode. So we're going to select the top of our cabinet. Make sure I've got it all. Make sure I don't have bits that I don't want. Listen, I'll do it this way. It'll be easier. There we go. Oh, the top is not quite right. Let's fix that up. Okay, so. We've got too much. So we want to remove that. Remove that. And then we want to remove the... All right, so now we can detach that. Which means I can Let's move the pivot to the middle of the object so it's easy for us to move. Now I need to go back into this key. work out where I want to put this. So I think we'll do a cut about there. So we're looking at it from the top. We'll do a cut. We'll cut it around about in a line with the edge of the bench down here at the bottom. To try and keep things nice and balanced. So again, I'm just going to jump into the top viewport, throw down my slice plane, let's rotate it around. Move it down to a roundabout in line with the edge of the bottom counter. And slice it. Now we can select all of that. Delete it and get rid, of, get rid of that as well. 
now we can rotate this. I'm just going to isolate these two so it's easy for us to work with. Remember to save and copy. Good suggestion. Um, now it looks like this end piece is a little bit too small, so I'm just going to scale it up. Now we're going to attach these two pieces together. Go into vertex mode. And weld these together. Stop that. So to be careful not to select um, more verts than I, I should, than I want, because that would not be good. I'm going to select all of the vertices along the top. And we'll scale it down. And all the ones along the bottom. Scale them down. Thank you, Hellforge. Yes, if you do want to join the Field Australia Discord server, click that link Hellforge has just popped into Twitch chat. And if you want to wish this the game you see me working on here, click the link that's in Twitch chat. Just trying to work out what's going on here. Might be a good opportunity for us to... Why is that not... Um... Very odd. Let's, let's play with the uh, new... Um... What's it called? The new retopology tool here inside of Max. I haven't actually used it yet. This might be a good opportunity to use it. So I'm just going to reset the pivot to the middle. Just before I do that, I'm going to just try my scale trick again. Yeah, no. well, let's, let's do the reach apology. Let's you, uh, play with this reach apology tool. Uh, I'm going to do it on a copy though, just to be on the safe side. So, reach apology. We'll keep everything at default for now. I might just up this to 10,000. No, no, we won't do that. 
because like, I don't like what it's doing here. So we'll do something else. going to delete the top place. This is actually the bottom of the cabinet, not the top, but anyway. And we'll do a cap. Now we can unhide. And that's better. So, we've got our window that'll sit Round about in here. We'll have our oven that'll be there. And we'll have our fridge that'll be there. Now, I may end up putting a bench or something in the middle, depending on how big the kitchen is, because I can't quite remember the size of the room. So if the, if the room is big enough, wide enough, that we can have like a, a bench, like a square bench or something in the middle here. Maybe something with on wheels, I don't know. We'll, we'll take all that when we come to, to do the kitchen. We may do that. Otherwise, we'll just have an, an open kitchen here. I still haven't decided on what I want to do for the walls or for the floor. But again, once we start maybe texturing this up, I'll, I'll have a better idea of how I want to go. I think that should be okay. Uh, I just have noticed though that... <laughs> We don't, I haven't put handles on these doors yet either, so let's do that. Let's do a quick save though. Just to be on the safe side. Uh, so we want to copy one of these handles. Let's move the pivot so it's easy to move. Um, Helpwood says, don't you have some tile material already sorted out in a reel? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I do have floors that we could reuse for the kitchen that we've used like in other places, but I'd like each room to look unique in the game. So um, I've been creating unique textures for each room, but I do have stuff we could reuse. If worst comes to it. Android Lust, hey, I didn't think you were going to be here. It's good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Android Lust says, nice kitchen you got going there. It's good to see you. Are you still out of town or are you back in town now? Oh, uh, yeah, because Android Lust put a message in the Discord saying he was out of town and he didn't think he could make it. But I'm glad you're here. It's good to see you on our second last stream of the year. So we want to move that there, we want to move that there. So I'm basically copying the design from over here. Yeah, you just got in? Cool. I was telling the guys it's really hot here today. Hot. I'm hot. Very warm in Melbourne today. Very warm. Okay, let's uh, copy that. So, because this is basically another door here, I think, that'll open up. Uh, it'll open up. That one opens up that way. This one. Why that open? Why that open that way or that way? Probably should open. That one opens that way. Really, this one should open this way. It's always hot in Australia, it is. It's always too bloody hot. <laughs> I live in the wrong country, it's too hot. I hate summer in Australia so much. What can I do? Move somewhere else, that's what I can do. Uh, so yeah, that one opens that way, which means this one should open this way. So let's copy the handle for here. Okay. And then 
I just don't know if I've put any any actual drawers in there. No, I haven't. <laughs> you see, there's nothing actually as far as cupboard space goes in there yet. Uh, so I'm going to have to do that. So I guess these can be three drawers. And that can be a cupboard that opens out that way. So let's copy our handle. that one okay uh, that's not going to be a, actually that could probably be a cabinet as well that opened up if I wanted it to be do I want it to be that's the question actually maybe not we might make this one a cabinet so let's move a draw a, a handle rather up here let's go on the top ones it's toward the bottom okay Hellboard says move to Japan. They got colder climate and cheaper tech, <laughs> but they they don't. I, I can't speak Japanese. That wouldn't be good. That could be a problem. I have to go somewhere where they speak English. I was taught Japanese when I was in school. I, I did Japanese, German, Japanese, German. I think that was it. I think it was Japanese and German. So I did learn some Japanese, but not enough that I could move there and speak to them. Because <laughs> uh, I'd really like to live in Germany, actually, as well. It gets nice and cold in Germany. But I'm pretty sure one of the requirements for living in Germany is you must be able to speak German. They won't let you live there if you don't. At least that's what I've heard. Unless that's a myth. You must be able to speak. This is if you want to live there permanently, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Not if you want to go for a holiday. Uh, Andrew Loss says, when I was younger, I wanted to move to Japan. I don't really want to do that anymore. No, I don't want to live in Japan. <laughs> Alford says, did you realize that uh, anime cat girls aren't real? You've just broken my illusion now. I'm, I'm so disappointed. You, anime cat girls aren't real. Hellford says, I thought about it, but I'm not sure. I'd have to visit for vacations a couple of times to see if I like it or not. Smokeberry, hey buddy, it's good to see you. Hope you're well. Good to see you, Smurf. I added a, a separate Discord channel. Now, again, for anyone that's coming to the stream a little later, um, I've added two new uh, channels to the Discord. One is called uh, Art, Help and Advice. So if you've got a question, an art-related question, pop it in that text uh, uh, discussion channel. Uh, and also a Tools and Scripts section. So if you wanted to post a link to your uh, GitHub for that tool you created for Blender Smurf, you can do that in the Tools and Scripts section. It's just for uh, if you come across any interesting tools or scripts that you think uh, that users could find e interesting or useful. Just pop a link to it in there, and that goes for anyone. Android just says, well, two things. I let my three years of Japanese go to waste. I also think Japan isn't what I originally, isn't what I originally thought it was, I'm assuming. So yeah, feel free, feel free to use those new uh, Discord chat channel sections. What are they called on Discord? Are they... Text, well, I'm looking at Discord, they call them text channels. I don't know why they call them channels, but anyway. <laughs> status Active, thank you for the follow, Status Active. Welcome to Phil Does 3D. Uh, remember, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in chat. If you want to show off your work, feel free to pop it in the gallery on the Discord server. But welcome, Status Active. Thank you for the follow. Okay. So we've got the handle there. I'm not going to make that into a door. 
We've got a door there. I'm not going to make those into doors. We have a door here on the corner. We have a door here and a door here. Uh, we are going to make these drawers, probably. Big drawers. I don't know what you put in them, but... Uh, so we can just copy the same handle and rotate it. Move it to around about the middle. Um, just trying to see if I can find find a spot here where I'm looking directly at it. Don't know that I do really. Just making sure we are actually intersecting the door. Again, I'm just going to double check the ones we've got here so I can see our positioning is around about the middle usually. Actually, I don't want them in the middle here because these are much bigger, so toward the top is better. Okay, and then we have these here, which really should be drawers as well, I guess. So let's duplicate this one. And this, this, these ones we will put around about the middle. Um, Status Active, sorry, says, uh, Hey, Phil, are you working in ArchBiz? Yes, I do ArchBiz, and I also, I work for two studios, um, Status Active. I work for an ArchBiz studio, and I also work for a game studio. And what you see me working on here is actually for the game that I'm working on, which is called The House in the Hollow, which you can wishlist on Steam. That's for the game studio. But I work in ArchBiz too. What, you, what about you? What do, you? do you do 3D? Do you work in ArchBiz? Hellforge says, uh, if you become a citizen in Germany, you can move freely across all of the EU. UK not included soon. <laughs> that's right. Android Lust says, I know a great ZBrush plugin, but yeah, no, that's fine. If you know a great plugin for ZBrush, pop that in the... Um, in the tools and scripts channel on the discord server as well it doesn't matter just because you know i don't like zbrush <laughs> if you come across something that's uh, good for zbrush pop it in there it doesn't even have to be 3d related it can be any sort of tool or script to do artwork so go for it Elford says which seems like a pretty sweet deal yeah it does if you can move all over europe for sure smurf says uh the engine zone or however you spell it I, I, I can't pronounce it. What is that? Shenzhen. Hellforge says, uh, status active. Yeah, Phil does both Archbiz and game stuff. Yes, I do. Hellforge says, sometimes he gets so focused on work he forgets. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. I do. I get focused on what I'm doing and I forget about the chat. Uh, that's the, the link to the game that you see me working on now. The, these are the assets for the kitchen for the Art Nouveau building, which is in that game. And that's the link to the Steam store page where you can check it out. Order my art station if you're curious about me. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at PhilDoes3D or my YouTube channel, PhilDoes3D. Funny that. Because uh, I do always post when I go live on my Twitter account, but my schedule doesn't change. It's every Monday, Tuesday. 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States is when I'm live. The, uh, I'm streaming today and tomorrow, but then I'm uh, off until the middle of January because I go on my Christmas New Year break. So, so I will be streaming tomorrow, but that'll be the last stream for 2020 tomorrow, and then I'll be back about mid-January. 
and back to our normal schedule of twice weekly, like usual. Our status actually says I'm a student in CG Spectrum and uh, almost done with the first term cool, of the intro course. Uh, I'm building up my portfolio and working on different projects. My main tools are Maya, Blender, and learning Unreal Engine and Substance Designer. I want to be a hard surface artist mainly. Cool. Well, we are using uh, the Unreal Engine for this game. You'll see me working in Unreal soon. Uh, we're going to be texturing up these assets in Substance Painter. Uh, and then we're going to be jumping into Unreal to create the actual kitchen in the game engine. So, yep, I'll be working in UE4 and I'll be working in Substance Painter. Uh, and you'll see me working in Ryzen to do some UV mapping soonish. But yeah, that sounds really cool. So you're a student in CG. Nice. Uh, Maya in Blender. Uh, Snarker Echo, who's in chat, uses Blender. Contigi, hey. <laughs> He loves Blender. I use 3D Studio Max, which is what you see me working in here. Uh, but a couple of the guys use Maya. So they're all good all good 3D program. It's very cool. It does sound cool. Uh, Kintigi, it's good to see you. He says, I need to learn Substance Painter. Well, watch me and I'll show you how to use Substance Painter, Kintigi. No excuse. Uh, I'll be jumping into Substance Painter to start texturing these assets up real soon because um, We've UV mapped the fridge, we've UV mapped the oven. I'm finishing off the design here on the kitchen. With Then we're going to UV map it. And then we're going to be jumping into our Substance Painter to texture paint those assets. And then we're probably going to jump into Unreal to actually start setting the kitchen up. But I still haven't decided on a design for the walls or for the floor or for the curtains for the kitchen yet. But I won't be tackling that probably until I get back from break, so. So I got a while to think about that. I can think about it on my break. Android Lust says, well, Contigi. Yes, welcome to the journey as Android Lust says to status active. It's good to see you, Contigi. I hope you've been well. Then remember, tomorrow will be my last stream of 2020, and then I'll be back around about the middle of January. Hellford says, Blender got some good things going for it. It has, and that's free. You've got no excuse, you don't have to spend a cent to do 3D. Uh, download Blender and start playing around. And Tikkun Tiggy, thank you for the subscription. I missed that. <laughs> thank you, Kintigi, for the sub. You are awesome. And you've been subbed for 15 months in a row. All you guys are so awesome. I really do appreciate it uh, when you sub to the channel. So thank you very much, Kintigi. And thank you as well, Android Lust, because I know you're a sub too. Uh, it does help the channel when you sub, so... <coughs> I've got something stuck in my throat, hang on. <coughs> Man. <coughs> Bill's choking here. <coughs> I hope I didn't, like, swallow a fly or something. I felt like something got stuck in my throat. <coughs> So thank you, Contigi, and everyone that subs to the channel. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. <coughs> My apologies for copying into the mic. And Hellforge has just popped a link there to Blender by the look of it. Status Active says, anybody use Moto? I hear it's great for hard surface. I haven't, I, I don't use Moto, no. No, I wouldn't know about much about Moto. I don't know much about Moto. I mean, I've heard of it, but I haven't used it. Um, the Archbiz Studio I work for, we tend to use, uh, we use Max for our 3D modeling, um, and we use V-Ray to do our rendering, usually. So that's what I'm most familiar with with regards to Archbiz. As far as uh, software goes, I mean, I do use a lot of different software, though. I mean, Max Eon View we use at the studio. You can't see it because it's behind me. Uh, but a program called View, V-U-E, we use that to do environment renderings for our Archbiz. Uh, World Creator I use to do stuff for Unreal, to do landscape stuff. Speed Tree is what I use to do uh, real-time 3D tree modeling. Mari is another program I use to do uh, UV texturing, to do texture mapping. Painter, of course. Lots of different stuff. Um, I specialize though in photogrammetry work, so for the studio, so we do a lot of photogrammetry stuff. Which is really cool and fun. 
Android Lost says, I haven't used Moto yet. No, I haven't either. Hellboard says, hope you're right. Hellboard says, the only thing I know about Moto is that it's a terrible ice hockey team. <laughs> Android Lost says, I've used other software from the Foundry, but not Moto. No, I haven't used Moto either. But Mari is made by the Foundry. But I've not used Moto. Okay, so we've got uh, door there, door there, door there, drawers there, drawers there, door, door. And then on this side, we've got, we've got a door, 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 drawers, drawers, door. Lots of drawers up here, lots of cupboards. Draw, 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 draw. okay. And like I said, when we bring this into Unreal, we'll start playing around with positioning. But that's that's my initial thought. Window is going to be here. Door is going to be here. Fridge is going to be here. Oven is going to be here. And if we've got room, we'll put a table in the middle, a bench table or something. So let's do a quick save before we before Max crashes and we lose everything we've done. Just going to pull these out so we can look at them a little bit more easily. I'm going to take this around. Quick save. Uh, Android Lust says, sorry, Hamford says, I hope you're right. The uh, only thing I know about Moto is that they're a terrible ISO. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Android. I've already read the chat and I'm rereading it. Okay, so what do we need to do now? We need to UV map the kitchen. Um, and you'll see that our cupboards are empty. I'm actually going to have to create cupboard space in there as well. Yeah. But I think we should probably start UV mapping first. You'll notice here... Yeah, we were open at the bottom of the other skirting at the bottom here. Um, So I'm probably going to have to seal that up before we bring it into Unreal. See, normally when you create these sort of things to do ArchViz, so you know you set your kitchen up, you, you position your camera however you want it to look, you know, cool. Uh, you, we generally never see underneath the skirting board, so generally we, we don't model it in. But because it's in Unreal, you're probably not going to be able to see it either. Because even if you crouch down in the game. You're not going to get that low that you're going to be able to see up under the skirting board. Uh, but we, we can open the cupboards, so that could be an issue. We'll, we'll work on that, though, later. After I've UV mapped it, I think. It's not, 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 not difficult. I've just got to basically duplicate this piece and make it a bit bigger and scale it back. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the best way to tackle that. I'll show you what I mean. We, we can probably do it really quick. So if I scale this one, uh, duplicate this piece, scale it down. Then I can bring it in. I may have to throw an edit poly down. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to isolate both of these so it's easier for me to work with. And then we can move this down, move this in, move these up. Move these over. Uh, 
Our health board says, I've had some loose ideas about trying Arthrobiz a few times over the years, but I've never gotten it to look right, so I haven't pushed on with it. Practice makes perfect. Health board says, so many directions you can go with 3D, it's so hard to pick a path to get started with. Yeah, no, no, the heck, it can be a bit overwhelming, for sure. So let's pull this down. So now if we go back to un unhidden mode, uh, now we have a sealed up thingy here, but I need to move this down. And I need to move this one down. And yet yeah, now we have um now our cupboards are completely sealed. We'll just need to do that on the other side as well. But yeah, normally normally don't, we wouldn't do that. Saves time and saves polys and the player can never see there. But, but because we're going to be opening up the cupboards, we probably should have uh, the board there anyway. Just going to move it down a little bit. Okay, let's do a quick save. Smurf says, is that design period accurate? It is Smurf period. Actually, it's, uh, do you remember when we did the, the bathroom? The bathroom cabinets? They, they're actually this design as well. So it's, it's a 20s, lots of curves. Um, yeah, and the bathroom cabinets sort of match this as well. So it is an accurate design. With a bit of artistic license. Um, and we'll probably end up making them like a wood like, and a marble. But we'll, we'll decide that when we, when we jump into into Substance Painter. I think. Yes, it's period. It is period. Hellboy says, I'm sure Phil is drawing inspiration from, <laughs> from childhood memories back in mum's kitchen. Excuse me, how old do you think I am? You get a Phil slap for that. How rude. <laughs> I'm not, if, that, if, that, if it was a 1920s kitchen, I'm not like, you know, 120. <laughs> how rude. That's a slap. You get a slap. <laughs> Man, come on! It was worth it? I'm glad it was worth it. <laughs> I think we might leave it there for today, guys. Um, I will be back tomorrow, of course, at 5pm Pacific Time for the last stream of 2020. So again, tomorrow will be my last stream for this year. Uh, after tomorrow, I won't be back until the 15th of January. So make sure you're here tomorrow for the last stream of 2020. Um, if you can't be here tomorrow, I'll wish you a happy Merry Christmas now. But we'll do the Christmas uh, thingy tomorrow because you know every year at Christmas time I do that graphic, that Christmas graphic at the end of the stream. That will be for tomorrow. Uh, I do want to thank you all though for being here. I want to thank um, Contigi for the sub and I want to thank Status Active for the follow as well. Remember, if you want, do want to join the Fildos 3D Discord server, you can click that link in my, under the About Me in my um, panels, or just type exclamation Discord in Twitch chat at any time. Smurf says decals and trim sheets give you very nice results and are modular, which is very efficient. What are we talking about? <laughs> Thank you, Helpful. Uh, I don't know why the Discord one didn't go off though. I'll do it for you. There's the Discord link right there. 
Um, maybe there's a cooldown, actually. It might be a cooldown thing. But I will be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. We'll start UV mapping up this kitchen, and if we get the UV mapping done before the end of the stream, then we're going to start texture mapping up either the fridge or the oven, or we'll see how we go, maybe the kitchen here, in Substance Painter. We probably won't be jumping into Unreal until I get back from my break. But I will be back tomorrow. You guys take care, uh, and hopefully I will see you all tomorrow for the last stream of 2020. Hellforge says, status us. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm sorry, status. I didn't see uh, your, your, your question. Uh, status Active says, the industry seems to move toward decal system like uh, in Doom Eternal and Star Citizen, where customization is still possible in the detail stage, late in production without reworking the mesh. Just uh, add the width and the height information and the engine in the engine. It looks great. What are my thoughts on that? Well, yeah, decals, that's not what I would call a decal. I mean, do you, yeah. hang on, let me, let me reread the question because I'm getting... The industry seems to move towards decal system like in Doom, Eternal and Star Citizen where customization is still possible in the detail stage, late in production, without reworking the mesh. Yeah, uh, if, if, we're, if, if you're talking about decals the way I think of decals, yeah, they are really useful, really efficient for making, for varying up a texture. But it's a texture thing, not a modeling thing. <laughs> Smurf says, read up, man. Yes, I know. I didn't write next to your fill slap. Okay. I got there in the end. Uh, so, yeah, too busy drunk on power and slapping. With slapping, that's right. Totally worth it. Yeah, the, yeah, the little decals are cool. I agree. They're being used a lot. <laughs> um, where did my graphic go? Why did it disappear? What's going on? Why did it not show up? There we go. <laughs> Why did that disappear? Maybe it's on a timer. Um, and I've been talking for too long as usual. Yep, no decals are cool. But I'll be back tomorrow. So you guys take care. Have a great night. And I will see you all tomorrow for the last stream of 2021 uh, 2020 <laughs> see you guys